Known only from the back end of its skull, Aegisuchus seems to have had a very wide and flat head, possibly similar in shape to those of the pancake crocs. But its weirdest feature was a raised circular bony boss in the middle of its forehead. Unlike any other known croc, the bone around this area shows evidence of deep blood vessel channels, suggesting it was anchoring a more extensive keratinous shield. Much like the horn seen on some crocodilian species this was probably used for territorial and mating displays, but its extensive blood supply may have also allowed it to play a role in body temperature regulation. Aegisuchus would have had a fairly weak bite, and may have fed more like a pelican than a modern croc, snapping up fish and other small animals with its gaping mouth. Borealosuchus was a mid-sized genus of crocodile, with the largest species Borealosuchus acutidentatus attaining lengths of 280 cm in length, with a skull 36 cm long. It is also another genus of crocodile that survived the KT extinction that marked the end of the dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and the great marine reptiles. It may be that the physiological and ecological characteristics of crocodiles allowed them to survive this extinction event as other crocodile genera. Bovarisicus was much more heavily armored than its modern cousins, with an interlocking exoskeleton of bony osteoderms covering its body and limbs, leading to it being given the nickname Panzer Croc. It was adapted for walking and running on land, with relatively long legs and surprisingly hoof-like claws. It may even have carried its weight directly on these hooves similar to mammalian ungulates. And if that's not unusual enough, its hind leg musculature suggests it also might have been capable of short bursts of bipedal sprinting. Pristichampsis is a crocodile that bears all of the hallmarks of a terrestrial lifestyle rather than an aquatic one like today's crocodiles. The key clues to this lifestyle can be seen in the legs which are longer than those of semi-aquatic crocodiles to allow for more terrestrial locomotion. Additionally the ends of the toes were hoof-like for better traction on the land. The temporal and geographical ranges as well as the number of individuals of Pristichampsis indicate that it was a very capable predator. The early Eocene is marked by abundant warm forests which would have provided plenty of ambush locations for a predator like Pristichampsis to use to surprise prey. The warm climate also helped with a reptilian cold-blooded metabolism so that crocodiles like Pristichampsis could be more active. Named Mechasuchus, the new Caledonian crocodile was only about 2 meters long. It was much more terrestrial than living crocodiles, spending most of its time on land, and it had teeth in the back of its jaws that were specialized for crushing, suggesting it mainly preyed on hard-shelled invertebrates such as snails and crabs. Based on its limb anatomy it may also have been able to climb trees. Although this idea was ridiculed when it was originally suggested back in the 90s, a more recent discovery has shown that modern crocs can actually climb trees too. Quincana has been argued amongst paleontologists to be entirely terrestrial or semi-aquatic with no definitive consensus. Academic analysis cites comparative morphologies as indicators of Quincana's habitation to be terrestrial, but others argue that most specimens were discovered near known sources of water. An ongoing debate also persists about its dominance as a Pleistocene predator based upon the proportional quantity of predaceous reptilian discoveries compared to predaceous mammalian predators. The opposing side questions its predominance through findings that it coexisted with several other predators and prey. Dinosuchus was similar to caimans and alligators in many ways. Its head was shaped like theirs, with a broad and elongated skull. Estimating its size was a little difficult for scientists because of the fragmented nature of the fossils. Based on reasonably accurate reconstructions, paleontologists think the Dinosuchus would have been about 10 meters long on average. It was carnivorous and one of the largest predators of its time, with few competitors. Based on the tremendous bite strength of this crocodilian, some experts speculate that it might have preyed on dinosaurs. 
However, Deinosuchus would have hunted most of its prey in the water since claims that it spent a lot of time on the ground like modern crocodiles are unconfirmed. Other than its enormous proportions, it was remarkably similar to modern crocodiles, an indication of how little the crocodilian line of evolution has changed over the past 100 million years. For many people, this raises the question of why crocodiles managed to survive the Cretaceous extinction event 65 million years ago, while their dinosaur and pterosaur cousins all went kaput. As a caiman crocodile, Purosaurus had an extremely stout and robust skull that housed large conical teeth suited for gripping and holding on to powerful prey. The large size, over 12 meters long, and estimated strength of this animal appears to have allowed it to include a wide range of prey in its diet, making it an apex predator in its ecosystem. As an adult, it would have preyed upon large to very large vertebrates such as the xenarthrans and notungulates present, with no real competition from sympatric, smaller, carnivores. Researchers have proposed that the large size of Purosaurus, though offering many advantages, may also have led to its vulnerability. The constantly changing environment on a large geological scale may have reduced its long-term survival, favoring smaller species more resilient to ecological shifts. Spectacled caiman inhabits a variety of freshwater habitats throughout their range in Central and South America. They are opportunistic feeders and will eat a very wide variety of prey. They are known to be ambush predators. These caimans are known for their social behavior and often congregate in groups. These groups can vary in size from a few individuals to several dozen. They build nests out of vegetation near the water's edge, and the female guards the nest. When the eggs are ready to hatch, the mother will assist the hatchlings in reaching the water. Smooth-fronted caimans are predominantly nocturnal, this behavior allows them to avoid higher daytime temperatures and potential predators. They are generally solitary animals, but during the breeding season, they may form small social groups. Males are territorial and may defend their territory from other males. During the breeding season, males emit a series of vocalizations that are unique to their species. After hatching, the mother provides protection for her young, allowing them to stay close to her in the water for several months. The American alligator inhabits tropical freshwater wetlands. They are apex predators and consume fish, amphibians, birds, and mammals. In 2013, American alligators and other crocodilians were reported to also eat fruit. They play an important role as ecosystem engineers in wetland ecosystems through the creation of alligator holes, which provide both wet and dry habitats for other organisms. Throughout the year, they bellow to declare territory, and locate suitable mates. The sex of American alligator hatchlings is determined by the temperature at which the eggs are incubated. Lower temperatures tend to produce females, while higher temperatures result in males. This is known as temperature-dependent sex determination. Alligators are ectothermic, meaning they rely on external sources of heat to regulate their body temperature. They bask in the sun to warm up and cool off by staying in the water or in shaded areas. The Chinese alligator is listed as critically endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Its population has declined significantly due to habitat loss, pollution and hunting for their meat and skin have. They have relatively slow reproductive rates, with females typically producing small clutches of eggs every two to three years. In Chinese culture, the Chinese alligator is seen as a symbol of longevity and protection. It is often associated with water deities and is considered an important part of local folklore. Alligator munensis is an extinct species of alligator from the quaternary of Thailand. After its skull was discovered, 
it was tentatively assigned to the Chinese alligator before being recognized as a distinct species. It had a short and robust skull and may have had globular back teeth possibly corresponding to a greater amount of hard-shelled prey items. The nostrils of alligator munensis were positioned much further towards the back of the skull than in other alligators, but the function of this is unknown. Thoracosaurus is a medium-large gharial-like crocodile that lived during the late Cretaceous through to the Paleocene. Fossils of Thoracosaurus are usually associated with North American and European fossil deposits, but remains from other places such as India have also been reported. The sheer number of Thoracosaurus fossils seems to indicate that the genus was quite successful when compared to other similar creatures of the times and location that the genus existed. Toyotamophimia was originally described as a prehistoric species of the Thomistoma genus, better known as the false gharial. Today the false gharial is known to attain lengths of up to 5 meters in the wild, with isolated skulls suggesting a theoretical limit of somewhere between 5 and a half and 6 meters long. It seems to have been comparable in size to modern false gharials, and would have been one of the most dangerous animals in the Pleistocene waters of Japan. The elongated snout of the Ramphosuchus is one of its most notable features. Paleontologists gave it the name Ramphosuchus, which means beak crocodile. The name refers to the beak-like appearance of its long and narrow snout. Like all crocodilians, it had short and stout legs. It also had a strong tail, making it an efficient swimmer. Sizing this reptile has been a bit challenging for paleontologists because the genus is only known from partially preserved skull fossils. Skulls often estimate the size of crocodilians, though. Given the large size of the reptile, they most likely did not have a lot of natural enemies. Gharials are easily recognizable due to their long, slender, and narrow snouts, which are lined with sharp teeth. These teeth are adapted for catching fish, their primary prey. Adult males have a bulbous growth at the tip of their snout known as agara, which is the source of their name. They are generally more docile and less aggressive than other crocodilian species. They are well adapted to an aquatic lifestyle and are often seen basking in the sun on sandbanks along riverbanks. The primary threats to gharials include habitat loss due to dam construction, pollution of river systems, illegal sand mining, and accidental entanglement in fishing nets. They are restricted to certain river systems in the Indian subcontinent. Their distribution has become increasingly fragmented due to habitat alterations and other human activities. Voe lived on the island of Madagascar during the late Pleistocene and Holocene. It had a fairly short and deep snout and chunky limbs, adaptations associated with a more terrestrial lifestyle that suggest it was specialized for hunting its prey on land rather than just at the water's edge. Much like modern horned crocodiles its particularly prominent horns were probably used for territorial displays, and may have been a sexually dimorphic feature with big mature males having the largest examples. Voe's disappearance just a couple of thousand years ago may have been the result of the arrival of human settlers on the island, either from being directly hunted or due to the large native species it preyed on also going extinct around the same time. The dwarf crocodile is a timid and mainly nocturnal reptile that spends the day hidden in pools or burrows, although it occasionally may be active during the day. Foraging is mainly done in or near the water, although it is considered to be one of the most terrestrial species of crocodilian and may expand the feeding pattern to land in extensive forays, especially after rains. They are generalist predators and have been recorded feeding on a wide range of small animals. True to its solitary, nocturnal nature, a dwarf crocodile digs out a burrow in which to hide and rest during the day, which can sometimes have a submerged entrance. 
An individual lacking the right conditions to do so usually lives between tree roots that hang over the ponds where it lives. The genus Crocodilus likely originated in Africa and radiated outwards toward Southeast Asia and the Americas, although an Australia-Asia origin has also been considered. Freshwater crocodile is shy and has a slenderer snout and slightly smaller teeth than the dangerous saltwater crocodile. They compete poorly with saltwater crocodiles, but are saltwater tolerant. The crocodiles have teeth that have adapted for capturing and holding prey, and food is swallowed without chewing. The digestive tract is short, as their food is relatively simple to swallow and digest. The stomach has two compartments, a muscular gizzard that grinds food, and a digestive chamber where enzymes act on the food. The crocodile's stomach is comparatively more acidic than that of any other vertebrate and contains ridges that lead to the mechanical breakdown of food. The saltwater crocodile is the largest living reptile. Males can grow up to a length of 6 meters and a weight of 1,500 kilograms. The primary behavior to distinguish the saltwater crocodile from other crocodiles is its tendency to occupy salt water. Though other crocodiles also have salt glands that enable them to survive in salt water, a trait that alligators do not possess, most other species do not venture out to sea except during extreme conditions. Like most species in the crocodilian family, saltwater crocodiles are not fastidious in their choice of food, and readily vary their prey selection according to availability. Nor are they voracious, as they are able to survive on relatively little food for a prolonged period. Because of their size and distribution, saltwater crocodiles hunt the broadest range of prey species of any modern crocodilian. Nile crocodiles are opportunistic apex predators, a very aggressive crocodile, they are capable of taking almost any animal within their range. They are generalists, taking a variety of prey. They are ambush predators that can wait for hours, days and even weeks for the suitable moment to attack. They are agile predators and wait for the opportunity for a prey item to come well within attack range. Like other crocodiles, Nile crocodiles have a powerful bite that is unique among all animals, and sharp, conical teeth that sink into flesh, allowing a grip that is almost impossible to loosen. Nile crocodiles are relatively social. They share basking spots and large food sources, such as schools of fish and big carcasses. Their strict hierarchy is determined by size. The Nile crocodile is one of the most dangerous species of crocodile and is responsible for hundreds of human deaths every year. The habitat of the American crocodile consists largely of coastal areas. Other crocodiles also have tolerance to saltwater due to salt glands underneath the tongue, but the American crocodile is the only species other than the saltwater crocodile to commonly live and thrive in saltwater. They can be found on beaches and small island formations without any freshwater source, such as many caves and islets across the Caribbean. Like any other large crocodilian, the American crocodile is potentially dangerous to humans, but it tends not to be as aggressive as some other species. American crocodiles are more susceptible to cold weather than American alligators. They do not have social groups but occasionally, they congregate for feeding and basking in the daytime. While basking, they will leave their mouths wide open that exposes blood vessels in the mouth to cooler and warmer air, which helps regulate body temperature. <laughs>